Yes. So, I was hoping no one would ask this. Okay. So if you look at Luke's genealogy, yeah, I'll repeat it. If turn it, well, turn to Luke. If you got your Bible, uh, turn to Luke. <clears throat> if you don't, you can be cast into outer darkness where there's a weep. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, in Luke's gospel, um, chapter three, verse twenty-three, it says that Joseph was the son of Eli or Haley, and the son of Mathot. Whereas if you go back to the first page of um, of the handout, Matthew chapter 1, who's Joseph's daddy? What's his name? Jacob. And his granddaddy? Mathon, right? Okay, so, whoa, what do we do? We got a contradiction here. Now, I thought about doing a talk on this. I really, trust me, it was very, very tempting to give you a talk on this. Um, there have been uh, explanations of this apparent contradiction, this discrepancy between the two Gospels, uh, all the way back to the second century AD. Like, Christians recognize this, and they're like, how do we solve it? And there have been different solutions to it. Some church fathers will say, well, actually, the genealogy in Matthew is Joseph's, right? And the genealogy in Luke is Mary's. So that's one way they've solved it. it that one's a little bit of a stretch because it really looks in Luke like he's actually giving you Joseph's. He says, Joseph, the son of Eli. So that one's, it's there. You can take it. The church doesn't have an official teaching on this, but that's one solution. Another solution uh, proposed by Julius Africanus and Eusebius is that um, Joseph and his father were both the sons of leveret marriage. Y'all know what leveret marriage is? It's from Leviticus. This is when if your brother dies uh, and he doesn't have any children, then the living brother would have a child with his wife in order to keep his name alive, okay? So Julius Africanus said, well, the, uh, the reason there are two genealogies is because Joseph and his father were both sons of a leveret marriage. So one of them is giving you the biological father and the other is giving you the legal father. The problem with that hypothesis is that it's, it, it's, it'd be really unusual for there to be two in a row, because it's not just Joseph's father's name that's different, right? It's the grandfather as well. All right. So the third hypothesis, and the one that I incline to, and if I had like an hour, I could take you through it in detail, is that of St. Augustine, who in his famous sermon on St. Joseph said, because people were bringing this up, pagans were saying, how do you expect us Christians to believe your scriptures? You can't even get the genealogy of your Savior right. One gospel says Joseph's father was Jacob, and the other one says it was Eli. And so Augustine responds, yes, how can a man have two fathers? It's impossible, of course, unless he was adopted. And then one is his biological father, and the other is his adoptive father. So Augustine proposes that it's a very simple solution, that Joseph's biological father died and he was adopted. And so Matthew gives you his biological line, Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob. But the other one, Luke says, not begotten, like fathering, but son of, which would be a legal status. Now, that blew my mind too when I was looking at Augustine. If Augustine's right, that's very powerful. Because it would mean that when God asked Joseph to take Jesus as his own, that Joseph would know what it was like to have two fathers. One you're natural, and one you're adopted. Right? Because Jesus has two fathers. His natural father is the eternal father, right? Who, from whom he is eternally begotten. And his adoptive father is St. Joseph. So I don't know about you, but man, that makes me really wonder if Augustine got it right again. <laughs> it certainly would give a, it would explain the openness of Joseph's heart to taking Jesus as his own, if he too had been received as the son of an adoptive father. And any adoptive parent out there watching, you know, adoptive fatherhood and adoptive motherhood is real. It's not biological, but it's real. And in fact, it's a kind of analogy of that spiritual fatherhood of the Father in heaven. We're all adopted children of God, at least according to St. Paul. All right. Well, I guess I am glad you asked it. All right. That didn't take an hour. <laughs>